is dead. A lot of you may have uh, heard rumblings <laughs> of bird flu. Heard some rumblings about the uh, bird flu going around. You've probably heard uh, you've probably heard some scary things a lot, um, such as the uh, fatality rate being like 50% and oh my god and it's scary. And I just want to present a bit of a let's move on. I remember swine flu. flu. It's yeah, always a different. We're, it's just a giant smorgasbord of, of animals that they put together. Well, there were some interesting narratives uh, lately about bird flu. And I just want to present them and I want to point out what the focus is. And I just want everybody to maybe think about this a little differently and draw their own conclusions. Because obviously there's an obvious reason why uh why why bird flu causes so much bird flu causes so much anxiety first off we just went through a pandemic which i think we can all safely say now was uh handled like shit um we were we were given a lot of bad information um we didn't handle it very well at all and frankly, the po policies, whether you agree with them or not, uh, it's it's inarguable that they cause a lot of damage. Um, you know, nobody liked lockdowns. Nobody liked, um, you know, I know more people than I can count who lost, uh, you know, lost their jobs, lost their whole careers, um, you know, lost their businesses. It was an objectively like, let's not do that again sort of shit. I know a teacher in New York who lost his job because he didn't want to take the vax. Yeah. So when you hear bird flu, you think, oh, fuck. We just got back to normal goddamn life. Are they going to fucking do this again? Like that's coming through everybody's heads. And even if you're even if, even if you're, uh, you know, like a, a, a giga bajillion jabbed covidian, like I, I just wear a full suit of masks when I go outside. Uh, I've got a picture of Dr. Fauci on every article of clothing I own, even if you're one of those fucking crazy. When do you people. think they're going to come out with dog flu? Dog flu? Um, That'd be tragic because I need like that. Everyone has a loved dog that they love and cherish i have a dog that i love and cherish and i oh, would my dogs my dog's my best boy um i feel like that's the target like i feel like now if they target people i'm not maybe i don't want to give any cia agents like um, any ideas <laughs> but you know the ones you watching dog, you mean? if you make a dog flu or a cat flu then you target people's loved ones and trust me people love pets more than they love other humans People love pets more that than will, grandma. They'll they'll okay. they'll scare they'll, that that'll scare the pajamas off all the people for sure. All that all that you're killing grandma shit. Well, you know what, Fido. That's no. You say hey, yeah. you're killing Fido. People will before run you could have said before you could have said oh yeah they're old they were gonna die anyway not anymore now it's your pets motherfucker. Bro, I'd probably die for my dog. I'm not even kidding. I would die. For I love him that I much. I love him that much. I would die for my dog. I would die for my dog. Because I wouldn't want to live in a world without him. And the hardest thing about being a dog exactly. owner is realizing that one day you're going to have to say goodbye. I can't get into this. I'm going to cry. Anyway. Um, do you want to bring it up or should I? I'm a little worried about playing <laughs> yeah, the videos. Sure. <coughs> okay. I can play the videos. Uh, okay. So just the first, the first one. Send me right the there. links for the videos, and then you share the. Okay, I'll share. I'll, I'll share the article because I feel right like up. the article is important. But uh, yeah, I'll just share it here. This is from a Twitter account. I'm not super I'll share familiar with. I'll share this. Yeah. In place this morning to try and stop the spread of bird flu. The Department of Primary Industries incident response team arriving at the farm in Freeman's Reach to begin their work. The strain found on the farm is separate to what has been detected on seven farms in Victoria's southwest, forcing more than a million chickens to be put down. But between 50 to 100,000 chickens will be put down on the farm in Sydney's northwest due to the detection of bird flu. Professor Michael Ward has told today that this is a unique situation. It's actually 
is something we haven't seen before, this many different viruses hitting this many farms. New South Wales police also arriving here at the scene this morning. An officer walking in with paperwork. This exclusion zone is in place. Anyone coming and going is washing off their shoes and wheels are being washed down before vehicles leave the farm. An exclusion zone of more than two. Okay. <clears throat> so i just like to make a bit of a disclaimer before I get into this. I'm presenting this. I, I assume most people who are watching identify with some kind of left-leaning ideology, be it anarchism, uh, Marxism, leftism, socialism, whatever. The reason why I'm presenting this is because you're not going to get these kind of takes from the left. You're only going to get it from the conservative you have to stay in the capitalist lane pipeline. Okay, that's so I'm trying to I'm trying to get this out to people outside of the bubble. Because I noticed a lot of people during COVID, even prominent like you know, socialist motherfuckers, anarchists, um, they didn't talk a lot about the uh, the other side of COVID. They kind of just focused on like Let's face it, the same narratives that came out of mainstream media. And if you think that's weird, you should. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to present an alternative take here, and I'm going to let you guys make up your mind. I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you what to believe. I'm not going to tell you what to think. Uh, we're just going to go through this, and then I'm going to go through an article, and uh, well, you guys will arrive at your own conclusions. Greg, Can I, I just the you the, form? yep, go for that. Okay. And bear in mind, before we play this, this is Fox News. So, how is that spreading if it's hmm. not from the cattle, which to me... Uh... Sorry about that. It's okay. I was going to say, like, do we talk now, or... What the fuck? No, let's put it. I'm dealing with like three monitors right now, so just by that. Start from the beginning. So, how is that spreading if it's hmm. not from the cattle? Which, to me, there might be a human component to this. Are the farm workers that move be between the herds spreading this? Hmm. It's very concerning. And so, I think one of the things we have to look at, look, what Finland's doing, which I mentioned last week, is to vaccinate the high risk farm workers. We already have H5N1 N1 vaccine stockpiled in this country specifically for this reason. Okay. We need to use it. We need to nip this in the bud before the virus gets used to transmitting between humans and becoming very good at it. That's but not what we want. We mentioned 12 states. California, though, doesn't have California it. California does not, yeah. no. Not okay, yet. okay. Well, so, how Okay. It's going to be a killer for farm life. But That's what I want you to think about. Okay? So, next, what I'm going to do is gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and share my, share my screen here. Right here. And I'm going to speed run this, if only because I, I don't I want to ask the chat, much. how many people in real, how many people do you see in real life these days in 2024 in the summer, do you see still wearing masks? Because yeah, that's I can actually tell you in, in, in New York, in New York, they're still wearing masks. There's like at least like, I don't know, like a group of like one out of 10 people would be wearing a mask though. That's how bad it is. At least, like, in on the subways and stuff. I'm going to be honest. Um, I I don't live in a city. I I don't see it a lot in Toronto, though. And that was our big, like, liberal haven city. I don't see it when I come to Toronto a lot. Um, around these parts, which is about, in, you know, kind of more in the, in the cottage area, um, I don't see a single fucking one. Nobody does this shit. Nobody cares. Um... Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question to ask. Okay. Let's get into this. I'm going to go ahead and share this. Uh, here we go. Here we fucking go. Okay. I like that. Bear with me. You can zoom in, uh, too, maybe a little bit. Okay. 
Does it, uh, can you just tell me real quick, does it show me scrolling? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so this is an article from Harvard Health Publishing. Uh, it was published on June 4th, so this month earlier. A bird flu, flu primer, what to know and do. Nine questions and answers on the global outbreak. <clears throat> A bird flu strain that began circulating in 2020 continues to evolve globally and locally within the United States. If you're wondering what this means, understanding the basics, what bird flu is, how it spreads, whether foods are safe, and prevention tips can help. More information will come as scientists learn more, so stay tuned. One, what is bird flu and how does it spread? Bird flu, or avian flu, is a naturally occurring illness. Just as certain blue... I just fucked my words up. Just as certain flu viruses spread among humans, type A influenza viruses often spread among wild birds. The strain of virus circulating now is H5N1, named for two proteins on its surface. Avian flu infections are highly contagious. Infection often spreads first among wild water birds, such as ducks, geese, and gulls, and shorebirds, such as plovers and sandpipers. The viruses are carried in their intestines and respiratory tract and shed in mucus, saliva, and feces. Wild birds can easily infect domestic poultry, such as chickens, turkeys, and ducks. Some bird species, including ducks, may carry and spread infection without appearing sick. Domestic flocks are most likely, more likely to sicken and probably die from bird flus. However, not all avian bird flus are equally harmful gives a bit of detail on the two different ones. Basically, not harmful and harmful as fuck. Two. So why are the same way? Do you understand? Do, um, do you, is there a reason, in a, like any particular reason why it's like we always have to switch? There was a monkey pox too. It's always a random animal or some kind of like livestock. But why you mean like the animals... I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Greg. Do no, but like, I mean, all, no, the, like, all of the animals that were, do you mean all the animals that were constantly so, testing gain of function research on? That might be a thing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> or the puppies, the, the Fauci puppies. I don't want to think about that. But Dog flu might come um, next. I, does anyone else like notice like this is like a pattern they've been doing kind of for years? Like, so like, they were talking about swine flu back before COVID, during the Obama era. And I just remember every single year, it was just like, there was always like around like March to April, they were always pumping something out about like, oh, there's like a new virus or something, got to get your back. And I always, you know, I, kn I know now that it's like big pharma, it's like basically like a big pharma ad run for like a couple of months. But they have a season where they just come up with the virus, and that, that that's like the new thing. I, I feel like COVID was kind of like the one time where they like kind of took it really far, and they locked down the whole world for two years over it, and it turned out to be a cold. But <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> yeah. Um. So the thing is, like, we don't really understand the truth behind any of this. But essentially, what happens is animals develop viruses and then they get scary when they start being able to move from one species to another or if it affects a species that we depend on because we do live in an ecosystem so uh you might have seen a lot of fear mongering on h uh h5n1 i think i always fuck up numbers uh, over like, oh, bird flu, it's going to kill us all. I've seen a lot of accounts on the bird app, like pushing the, f the same like COVID fear, like be afraid, whatever. Can humans get bird flu? Yes, though this doesn't usually happen. When flu viruses mutate, they may be able to move on, move from the original hosts, birds in this case, to humans and other animals. As of early April 2024, only two cases of bird flu in humans had been reported in the U.S. since 2022. In May, two more cases were reported. New case numbers of bird flu will continue to be reported by the CDC, which offers weekly snapshots of influenza in the U.S. The virus may be introduced into the body through the eyes, nose, or mouth. 
For example, a person may inhi inhale viral particles in the air. Droplets, tiny aerosolized particles are possibly in dust. Or they might touch a surface contaminated by the virus and touch their eyes or nose. Bird flu in humans typically causes symptoms similar to seasonal flu, such as fever, runny nose, and body aches. <clears throat> Which animals have been affected by bird flu? A surprisingly long number of animals affected by the current H5N1 bird flu infection includes wild birds, chickens, ducks, geese, and other domestic and commercial poultry in 48 states and more than 500 countries, livestock such as dairy cows in nine states at this writing and other farm animals, marine animals, wild animals. Why are experts concerned about this bird flu outbreak? It might seem odd that there's so much concern in news coverage about the bird flu lately. After all, bird flu has been around for many years. We've long known it sometimes infects non-bird animal species, including humans. But the, the current outbreak is unique and worrisome for several reasons. Far, fa fast, far spreading reach, the virus has been found through U.S., uh, US so I'm going to speed through this. Many species have been infected. Previously, uninfected species have been in affected, including animals in our food supply. E economic impact. If large numbers of beef and dairy cows and chickens sicken or must be called killed to contain outbreaks, this could have a major economic impact on farmers, agricultural businesses, and affected countries' economies. This could also mean higher prices at the grocery store. And potential, potential for fatalities. Uh, compared to COVID, it, it, nearly only 900 people in 23 countries have died from this since 2003. Next question, are milk, beef, chicken, and the rest of our food supply safe? Uh, they emphasize that the food supply is safe, but they're concerned. Bird flu DNA, which is not the same as live virus, is in 20% of commercially available milk in the U.S. And now there's just precautions. There's some copium, some hopium rather. Is there any good news about bird flu? Um, you know, some birds are developing immunity. Developing a big vaccine to protect cattle from bird flu might be possible. Oh, and uh, there's antiviral medicines. Human-to-human -human transmission hasn't been detected. So they're announcing that people aren't spreading this to other people. So they're saying at the end of the day, it's, it's not time to panic about bird flu. So, but I just want to ask everybody. Let's look at the chat and see if people have already clued into this. Because I think our chat's pretty fucking smart. They've probably already bought what I'm selling. <clears throat> Mainly in birds, not humans. An, an excuse to drive up protein costs, bad cookies. Okay. <clears throat> So people in the chat are kind of getting it. Let me ask this more directly just so I kind of make my point across. Greg, I'll ask you this specifically. In those clips and in that article specifically, what do you think the main focus was? Was it how this affects people? Or was it how this affects our food supply? Sounds like it's happening at farms. Yeah. So That's where we gotten to the whole puppy argument next they're gonna come to your puppies they're gonna come to your puppies and your cats your puppies and your kitties so a lot of the they could do that are... they could manufacture a virus that's targeted to your pets i really hope they don't do that i don't think they will because i think it's far more effective to have some kind of virus going after the direct food supply so <clears throat> Again, this doesn't get talked about a lot on the left because um, this is more of like a right wing or whatever talking point. And I think that's deliberate because I think the right exists as a mechanism to kind of 
a lot of the time they can say things that are nefarious and it doesn't fucking matter because people agree with that and then they get pulled over to the right and then they're never threatening the capital that's causing these problems. It's a little ingenious if you think about it. That's just my theory. But I digress. <clears throat> the whole thing surrounding this bird flu is focusing on our food supplies, specifically meat. Now, I don't know about you, but I've studied the World Economic Forum pretty well. And uh, they don't seem too fond of uh, cattle or poultry or anything other than a grilled cricket sandwich. And I'm not saying either that the bird flu is like automatically some conspiracy theory. I'm not saying they made it up. Could be an organic virus, right? But if there's one thing you need to understand about conspiracies or whatever have you is it doesn't have to be something they plan. It could just be something that happens and they take advantage of it. That's what I fully believe happened with COVID. I don't think they wanted that virus to get out of the lab. I don't think that was a plan. But they capitalized on it because that's what capitalists do. They capitalize. <clears throat> With this bird flu thing, the main focus seems to be we got to sell those jabs because, of course, we always got to sell jabs, right? And, oh, bird flu, we <sighs> – Sorry, we just got to do away with all these all these animals. Because they're already doing it. They're already culling the the meat food supply. They're already culling the meat food supply and and probably dairy as well to combat this. And they're manufacturing consent with all this fear mongering. So, you're just my hypothesis. Again, this is just a hypothesis. Um I think this whole fear mongering for the beard, the the beard flu. It's a beard flu. <laughs> no, we can't have that. The beard flu. Oh, oh we're we're both fucked. I'm not, if there's a no, beard no, flu. I'm not. I'm not. Sha I'm not shaving. No, I'm not shaving. I, no, I'd, die. I'd rather die. No, I would rather die too. Because if I shave, I look I I look like I'm about to go to prom. That's not happening. Okay, I'm too baby faced. I can't fucking. Yeah, do we it. we can't we can't do that. We, we will look like we will look like four year old human beings. I can already tell you could do if you shave, you'll probably look as young as I fucking do. Um, yeah, not with this haircut. I can't. Yeah, no, it's we're both back in high school the second we shave. So no yeah. beard flu. But um, the thing with the bird flu, I think all this fear mongering is starting my my theory, at least. This might be starting to manufacture consent for a, a drastic change in the food supply. I know there's a lot of worry over like, they're going to hit our food supply. They're going to starve us out. There's going to be a famine, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure if that's the case. I think what they more want to do is they might just use the bird flu to get you onto bucks. We've all done the meme. We've all laughed about it. You will eat the bugs. 